Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. I am Cedric uh, from Antwerp and today is gonna be a rather short video. Uh, why short? Because on one side I don't have that much to, uh, to say and on the other hand um, it's freakishly hot in here uh, today in Antwerp. We've reached the cape of 41 degrees Celsius um, which is the equivalent of a thousand degrees for me uh, I am doing two things that I never do uh, for one I'm wearing white and <coughs> second I'm wearing shorts so it is that hot and in that freakishly hot weather I thought I need something refreshing something uh, nice and summery and then it hit me, I still had a 37.5 centiliter bottle in my fridge of the Haru. And Haru is a beer by North Antwerp Brewery, uh, about which we've talked before with the Akens uh, beer. Uh, you remember the one with the cocoa fruit pulp. And yeah, I thought this might be the occasion to open up that bottle it's a beer that i've had here for about two or three months now because in a local store it was the beer of the month i have not yet tasted it uh, and i'm very very curious about it uh, but i do know that i say that with about half the beers that we're tasting why am i curious well because it is something special it is um made by a fairly young brewery and I don't mean just a brewery that has only existed for a few years but the brewers themselves uh, Niels and Evert are 29 and 30 years old and yeah one tiny detail uh, Evert is the brother of a friend of mine so shout out to the host. Um Evert has a uh, history in Horeca he's always been looking for special flavors and uh, nice combinations. He, he's worked in yeah, huge uh, restaurants and This is actually the result of some of Evert's interests and I do know that I talk about Evert a lot but Evert is the one um, creating the flavors and Niels is the one uh, more focusing on marketing and stuff like that um, Evert is very passionate about his products. He wants to make a well-balanced, great beer that no one ever has made before. Um, with Akens, he succeeded in that. And actually this beer is the product of a combination of his passions. Uh, for example, this is a Belgian dry triple, uh, 7.9 ABV, and it is uh, brewed with uh, barley as well as wheat malts so this is the product of a combination of Evert's passions um, I have told you guys in the last video and I will tell you again in the next video we make about him because then we're gonna talk about sake a lot but Evert loves sake and he even went to Japan for an apprenticeship in a sake brewery He brought some things home from there, uh, like the Koji. We're going to talk about that in a later video. But um, he also got to know the Sakura. And Sakura is basically um, the, the Japanese cherry blossoms that we all know and that are beautifully depicted on the bottle. He got to know that firsthand from a colleague who made a cocktail with that. And he couldn't place that flavor and apparently it's an umami flavor and it's a flavor that we in the western world aren't used to so he wanted to incorporate that in one of his products and yeah he started experimenting and then the haru was born now the haru is the first thing i thought about when i said a sunny summery beer <coughs> why um, but mainly because Haru uh, literally means sunshine or spring in Japanese. Now, as the bottle tells us here, 
Haru means spring and during this period you can see the bloom of the Japanese cherry blossom. This sakura flavored beer is inspired by the Japanese tradition of Hanami, which translates as watching the pink sakura flowers with your beloved ones. So yeah, all I'm missing now is beloved ones here. But then again, it's a rather tiny bottle. This is the 37.5 centiliter, not the 75. Haru is a Belgian dry triple of 7.9% ABV infused with hand-picked sakura flowers from Japan. The sweetness of the alcohol empowers the floral character of the sakura and the noble hops ensure a nice balance. Haru sakura infused is an excellent experience to share and enjoy and is great for food pairing. It's brewed by Fern Beers, blah 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 blah, North Antwerp Brewery. Okay. So. I can immediately tell you that I love this bottle and I'm not going to throw it away. Um, I have a small collection of printed bottles with candles uh, in my living room and this is going to be yeah, right up there with the rest of them. Now I have my trusted tasting glass here, but normally the Haru comes with its own glass. Uh, I have not yet succeeded in getting one. Um, they are rather expensive and hard to get because they are designed by Armand Lallemand. Uh, Armand Lallemand is a French three Michelin star chef uh, from Restaurant Lallemand in Reims in France and he designed a crystal handmade glass uh, because Evert and Niels are convinced, and I believe they are right in such things, uh, hashtag proper glassware, that you have to drink this beer from an elegant glass. Uh, an elegant glass that not only keeps the aromas in, but also looks great doing it. And actually, I almost never drink beer from the wrong glass. I'll either take a neutral glass or the right branded glass or when I'm at home, yeah, just my favorite glass. But right now I'm gonna put this aside because if they wanna have it drunk from an elegant glass, I thought I would try the Champagne Flute by Deus. And Deus is a Brut de Flandre, a champagne beer uh, this is a 12 centiliter glass. Let's just see how this goes. Uh, there's another reason why I'm taking this rather slim glass and that's because I really want to see how the color comes out. Remember from the Lindemann series that uh, how much light travels through your beer influences the color or how we perceive the color. So I'm gonna have the 12 centiliter in this glass and I might switch over to that one for the rest of it. Ooh. It's very soft on the nose. And reminds me of, of very, very soft uh, whiskey scent, a bit solvent-like and uh, maybe sake <laughs> but that's probably because i already said sake 12 times in this video and i haven't had sake in years uh, but i do remember it quite uh, being quite boozy and, and thin um, also a bit yeasty and fruity so i'm very 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 eager to try it out Oh, nice and active. A lovely head of foam there. It's like whipped egg whites. Uh, probably retracting rather quickly. A lovely, dare I say, orangey golden color. A tiny bit hazy, but I think that's more from the condensation because it's hot in here and I have a very cold beer in the glass. Foam is already retracting. 
but it's a nice nice white head of foam oh yeah still a bit boozy less than before I'm getting more yeast right now and maybe some dried fruit and quite floral but it's somewhere on the same line there like the, the floral component and the yeast component are yeah they, they smell it's very similar lovely lovely tiny bubbles it's like I'm having a glass of champagne right now and it does smell rather sweet now remember the sentence uh, sweetness of the alcohol empowers the floral character of the Sakura um, yeah one way to find out I guess but let's first secure the floral character and then see if the sweetness of the alcohol empowers it Okay, first of all, this sure qualifies as a dry triple. Um, it is quite boozy, quite alcoholic in taste. And honestly, if you'd ask me what the ABV of this beer was, I'd be eager to say nine, nine and a half instead of 7.9. So maybe it's a two cutting, a uh, double cutting blade. It's uh, the sweetness of the alcohol empowers the floral character or the floral character of the Sakura, Sakura also uh, emphasizes the alcohol. It is quite bitter, quite dry. Now, if you guys follow me, you know that I love dry. I like dry beers um, and this is this has an extra dryness and bitterness um, in the the roof of my mouth and also in the back of the tongue so it's a quite an all-round bitterness an all-round dryness um, and I do really get that floral character I do understand what they say or what they mean when they say sweetness empowers the floral character it's how can I say this um, it's quite carbonated but not too much so it's actually the, just the right amount and I think Ever did a great job in, in developing this beer because it's very yeah like I often say this is very balanced this is very well made it's actually a beautiful beer with an extra touch, an extra flavor that we don't really know. Uh, so, very rich, very full. The, the mouthfeel is also very full. And what strikes me as, as a very refreshing, not just in taste, but in, in style, um, very innovative is that the aftertaste actually is both dry and floral and that's that's something completely new to me now on another note I have read some reviews about this beer um, I've read people saying this is peachy orange copper color. Must have been the light. Um, but I also have read people um, stating that this is, it's all right and innovative. But, and I quote, they are pricing themselves out of the market. 
Now, let me tell you this. Um, is this a cheap beer? No. They import cherry blossoms from Japan for crying out loud. How can you make this a cheap beer? Um, we've seen that with the Akans as well. Um, I, I believe it was four and a half euros for a can, which is what I normally pay for an American beer. And then, yeah, it should be a damn good one. Um, for an Asian beer, for that matter. And it's all right because they import their uh, pulp from Chile. I believe it was Chile. Yeah, either way from South America. Um, now they import from Japan. And honestly, I, I just looked it up before I started uh, yeah, recording this video. I paid about six bucks for this bottle. 37 and a half. Tiny bit less. Um, the 75 centiliter is 13 and a half euro. That comes down to 18 euros per liter. Honestly, that's not that much for a specialty craft beer with a twist, which is innovative, which has something that no other brand or beer or brewery has. Um, am I gonna drink this every day? No, of course not. Do I like this? Yes, absolutely. Do I like paying 18 euros a liter? Uh, mm, that comes down to like six euros for a can or for a 33 centiliter. No, that is hella expensive. Uh, normally I draw the line at four euros. Sometimes, yeah, you see something special, you just take it home with you. We have to take into account that this is a brewery that is not aiming for the retail market. They are very open and honest about that. They are very upfront. And since they have a history in Horeca, in mainly restaurants, and yeah, Evert used to be a chef as well, they really work with food pairings. They work with restaurants. They work with... with uh, high-end chefs they work with businesses that actually replace wine in a food pairing by this and if you see what you would pay for a nice bottle of wine I don't know it's all right if I see that I can buy this in retail for 13 and a half for a 75 centiliter bottle, that would mean that I could have it in a restaurant for the same bottle, somewhere around 20, 25 euros. That's not, yeah, that's actually all right. That is what you pay in a high end business for a good bottle of wine. And if you have a good product, unfortunately, you have to pay for it. Um, so again, am I gonna have this in the fridge all the time? Nope. If I organize a tasting for people, which I often do, and I'm asking 15 euros a person or 16 euros a person, am I gonna bring this one for them? No. Um, why not? Well, because then they only get three beers or four beers instead of six, and they'll have to share a bottle with three or four people instead of two. On the other hand, if I'm at a, a high-end restaurant and I'm having an oyster uh, or a carpaccio or whatever, and this is on the menu, will I drink wine or this? I think I would like to go for this. That being said, um, I don't know of any bars where I find this beer. I'm not eager to sell it at the bar where I work because yes, with this pricing, it wouldn't sell at a bar. But again, that's not what they're aiming for. If they would be aiming for bars, they would make a cheaper product. Um, therefore, they would scale down the production process, they would use cheaper ingredients, 
it would be another product. So. Okay. Honestly, I like these glasses. Um, probably for champagne or very thin things. I do get now why the Haru glass is beautiful and very elegant, but larger, wider. And with a beer as full as this and as alcoholic as this, um, those tiny slim glasses don't cut it. So I am gonna do a test. I'm gonna make the comparison. There we go. It's a lot clearer, but of course the beer has warmed up a little bit. Has a bit more aromas to it as well now. Again, same foam, same color, very clear. And honestly, drinking from this glass feels way better. Um, okay, I think I covered everything. I said this was gonna be a very short video and eventually it came out a bit longer than I expected. Um, but I did have a few things to say about a few things. So guys, uh, again, if you liked it, if you have any remarks, uh, whether it's about the pricing or about the beer or anything else I just said, leave them down in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, like. Um, if you have any hints, tips, whatever, you can always contact me. If you wanna see more, yeah, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever I upload something new. And I'm very curious if you guys have tasted this beer, let me know and yeah, let me know what you think about it. Because these umami flavors and the, these special things, yeah, I just want to know if I, uh, if it's me or not. Again, beautiful bottle. I'm gonna wash this out, plant a candle in it, put it next to my TV, and I'll see you guys on Friday. Cheers, you guys. <laughs>